Hello and welcome to Travel Insights, brought to you by The Dope, a segment where we introduce you, our viewers, to veterans and visionaries of the travel trade. People who have uh, seen the travel industry in India grow and thrive over the years and who also have a keen eye on the future of the industry. Today we have with us a, a very well-known and popular personality in the travel industry in India, Vasudha Sondi. Vasudha is the Managing Director of Outbound Marketing and Connect Worldwide and also the Joint Managing Director of Om Tourism. She has spent over three decades in the Indian travel and hospitality sector and is also the Chairperson of Annapurna Charitable Foundation. Vasudha was at the peak of her career in 2002 when she decided to take the plunge, uh, take the entrepreneurial route to start her own venture, Outbound Marketing. This was to cater to the demand uh, for new market approaches for international hotel chains and the tourism boards across the world. She and her uh, highly motivated team are responsible to deliver the client's contractual obligations, which include, but are not limited to, sales solutions, uh, marketing and PR campaigns, branding concepts, as well as strategies. Vasudha is the driving force behind the sales and strategy in her company and her speciality lies in delivering numbers and revenue. She has won several awards for uh, source market growth and is currently working with five international hotel chains and two national tourism boards. So welcome Vasudha, welcome to our show today. Thank you. That was a really long introduction. I was also learning some things. Not at um, all. I thought, I thought it was very short for you. There was a lot more to be said, but paucity of time and so I had to cut it down to just that much. But welcome and thank you so much for agreeing to be a part of this show. So three decades in the industry, 30 years, you would have seen the Indian industry, uh, travel industry, tourism industry evolve and change and face the challenges and adapt to those challenges. So why don't you run us through these uh, 30 years and what are the changes and the evolution you have seen in the travel and tourism industry in India? So um, when I came into the business, you know, I had done my hotel school and, and of course I'd worked uh, with the hotels for some time um, and then I came into the travel industry and uh, I worked with one of the doyens then, Mr. Inder Sharma um, and actually they're two people apart from uh, my family and you know, uh, you can't work without the support of your family so I had that from my parental side and my husband and his family all of that but my raison d'etre as you say as you would say you know, reason to be here are, are two people and uh, one of them is Mr. Inder Sharma and I had the opportunity to hear him speak when I was in college um, and then later on I went on to work with him and I actually joined him uh, you know just before uh, this entire liberalization thing happened mm -hmm. and uh, and which happened in 19. 93 onwards so uh, so I I think I started work with him in maybe 91 or 92 and that was about the time you know things were getting really exciting and the market was opening up and, uh, it wasn't just $500 once in three years that people were allowed to take it was $2,000 and you know, a lot of you may not even remember that uh, but, but that was how it was and at that point I had actually after a couple of years I started uh, a representation company uh, for him and of course he was a vision behind it you know he was a, a great visionary and um, and I remember even sitting with RBI you know and they had these huge manuals mm -hmm. and I sat with them and I you know pointed out those loopholes where you could actually send money overseas mm -hmm. because it wasn't allowed you couldn't send money overseas um, so in, we were we were at that point representing GTA Gulliver's Travels Agency, and and uh, you know we had to remit money, and you were not allowed to do that. So you know I've really seen it from that point to where it is at the moment. But the one thing that I would say in that, that in these thirty year thirty odd years, from being a completely immature market uh, in terms of travel. We've, we've come halfway to being a mature travel market, but still, uh, but still not a mature travel market uh, is, is how I would actually describe the evolution. Yes, the consumer behavior has changed hugely. The buying behavior has changed. So there's been a huge uh, evolution from that uh, respect. 
so i mean in your business you practically deal with uh, three people one is of course your customer the the hotel chain or the tourism board the other is uh, of course the final customer the traveler and then of course is the travel industry itself so what are the changes that you have seen in these uh, 15 odd years that you've been running your own company in terms of uh, you know the the trends and and the behavior and the preferences on all three fronts the customer as in the traveler your client as well as the uh, travel and tourism professional in it okay so actually we started our business roughly 20 years ago we're going to be celebrating 20 years next year so okay. so that's uh, for me a huge achievement um and uh, and in terms of uh, you know all all of the if if you really look at every aspect of your working as working with clients mm-hmm. uh then everything kind of falls into place so you have your internal clients and you have your external clients and you've got to work in such a way where everywhere you can draw the best out of them and 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 with that thought process um the way we work with our hotels is always with uh, a sense of honesty a sense of transparency of what's going on in the market what can we actually um uh, and practically deliver to them and a lot of our clients initially came to us uh, for you know really quick solutions and and we would say that even though we're really well established and we do have uh, agents buying from us so we are able to understand how to get to the corporate and and drive the demand from them so that the demand from them goes to the agency and then the agency gives us a business there is no tap that can actually be turned on to deliver the business there is for every new brand coming in there is a gestation period and they have to go through that pains of uh, of getting the business uh, so that is definitely there and and then um, you know initially when we started the business we were although we started with choice hotels and we started with a great partnership with connect worldwide we were in fact their first office in india uh, and now connect worldwide covers 32 countries across the world um and choice hotels stayed with us for 13 years uh, like a 3 years handover period so you know they they had some great clients and and the reason we were able to maintain them is because of this constant um understanding that we need to evolve for them it's not that one year you've delivered and you know you're going to do the same thing yeah. for them over 10 years so then we were able to be relevant i think with the travel industry initially the focus was on trying to get new products in because i think we came in at a time when there were really very few representation companies and for us the focus was always to put the sales back into the representation business so it wasn't about going and and having a a uh, larida conversation and a cup of tea and you know it was always about being able to add value to the uh, travel agents work themselves and so we we took a lot of efforts in training in uh, educating and doing all those sorts of things i remember a time when we were working for accor accor hotels and and this was about uh, maybe 8 uh, 9 years ago um and we did a 6 7 years project with them uh, where we were part of their extended sales team and we completely established their uh, regional which is uh, you know the asia region and the international uh, sales out of india um and you can imagine you know with their uh, a number of sales people portfolio, yes and, and portfolio uh, uh, we were hired to do that and we we had great fun doing it and you know the first year what we did was we actually traveled to 23 cities and we carried with us little ipads and uh, and then we would give those ipads to the agencies and we would say okay now you start by first registering as the ambassador of aco you know there was a learning academy and so they could actually register into a program called the learn with us program and so we went across 23 cities registering agencies and i think we almost registered 1200 agencies oh. uh, as ambassadors uh, so we did really interesting things our 10th anniversary was celebrated by taking a road show to tier 3 cities in india with all our clients and you know we went to some places like trichy where they'd never seen a road show i think we were possibly the first ones to even go into nagpur my god okay and of course at that time harman was only Harman. running 
uh, business and and he worked with us a lot in uh, you know getting the central india uh, agencies uh, group together so so those are the sort of things that we did with the travel industry um and and then with our own team the third you said was our team right no i was talking about the customer the, 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 the traveler themselves yeah the traveler The what are the changes consumer. you've seen yeah in on the travel consumers uh, preferences and uh, trends so with the travel consumer um, there's been a huge evolution because when we first uh, first started selling uh, to the customer anyway when we first started selling it was to the corporate and uh, and it was really because that was choice hotels and choice needed corporate contracts so we would be going into these really huge it parks setting up a like a little uh, you know camp there and and then we would be working on um, on 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 setting up uh, you know like what they would say within a park like a studio a uh, wedding and learn about the brand and learn about how they could work with choice hotels so so that is the sort of thing we did even now we are very very focused on working with the corporate but not with a view to taking the business directly it's more with driving up demand we also realize sometimes that the travel agency has to be a, uh, does not really have the time to uh, to market a product you know uh, yes. maybe they would come halfway to marketing a product but they would rather be able to take a business and whatever the client wants to say okay if a client says that i want to go to a london and i want to stay in a corinthia hotel then they would say okay here's corinthia because there's nothing wrong with corinthia it's one of the top luxury hotels of london so if i want to give an alternative uh, a choice and i want to tell the travel agency no not corinthia but try and sell uh, some other hotel uh, that would be a little difficult so i think our role also was to educate the consumer to say this is our product make ourselves visible so that there is a demand for our product and that those are the things we've been doing of course the consumer now is a lot younger um and uh, you know the buying behavior is completely different they're buying a lot online um so they would look online uh, they would even call us and then they would go to the travel agency to say that okay this is what we want we know this about this product please uh, give us this or they would just book them themselves sure. uh, so those are the kind of changes that we've actually seen and now people are looking at all kinds of different experiences um uh, luxury uh, is almost a commodity so mm-hmm. we're redefining the term luxury which has been so loosely bandied about yes. um yeah so so th- so lots of changes rural tourism uh, staycations and uh, Airbnb has changed the face of how Absolutely. a person book. So, th- so you know, there's been a lot of uh, evolution in that sense. Okay, I'm sorry. This question actually I should have asked you earlier. So, which are the hotels and national tourism boards you are uh, representing right now? Between your two companies. Um. So we uh, work for uh, Visit Indonesia mm-hmm. and uh, Mauritius Tourism Promotion uh, Authority. um and uh, on the hotel side we work for um, melia hotel spain mm-hmm. uh, sun international hotel south africa and uh, corinthia hotels europe um onyx hospitality and uh, glh hotels uh, uk so in terms of destination two very popular destinations out of india i guess indonesia and mauritius so what's the kind of growth you have seen into these two markets uh, since you have taken over the uh, representation so indonesia has grown uh, exponentially mm-hmm. since the time we started working for them and um, and you know literally every year there's between uh, maybe uh, 20 to a 35% growth uh, on an average and um, of course discounting uh, 2020 and yeah. um, and then with mauritius when we took over we uh, we started with like a 18 20% 18% growth then it went on to a 14% and then um, and then a 10% and so on so it's and i think in the last year the growth was uh, maybe a minimum maybe 3% or something like that 
uh, and primarily because uh, you know one flight was pulled out uh, of the market for the seat were much less uh, and that's why we couldn't really because by by the time we'd reached our peak of a double digit the flights were almost going at uh, full occupancy right so unless there was a, a possibility of another flight coming aircraft coming in you know growth was difficult yeah so i guess yeah mauritius has always had the problem with air connectivity so i guess that could be a limiting factor otherwise as a destination i don't think you would have had a problem marketing it for yeah i mean i think as a destination um you know when we took over we were very uh, uh, cognizant of the fact that mauritius needed to be rebranded the mm. whole tagline need, needed to be understood by the traveler because at that point the tagline was discover Mm-hmm. and for us discover was not just about doing the north island and the south island south. tour and yeah it was really about discovering uh, oh, yeah. romance was the romance of life of actually living uh, you know discover heritage it was about discovering the places that were like the ramari for instance mm-hmm. you know which has always been there but it has never really been talked about so there was a whole new meaning to the term discover that was given mm-hmm. and i and i think that made all the difference so we engaged again at those two levels like we always do one at the travel agency level and one at the consumer level driving demand training and and somewhere i think that worked so you you're saying that you also get involved in the, the total marketing strategy of the particular destination when you are looking at marketing into india i mean like you said working on the tagline and how it's to be changed and how it has to be pushed yes initially we did mm-hmm. and and subsequently the taglines also got changed mm-hmm. and we didn't really have a role in that but in many instances we did even with uh, sun international hotels uh, when they wanted to rebrand it so a lot of the hotels got sold so i'm not sure if you know which products they have uh, but they it's a sun city the table sun bay hotel, hotel is a bit So mainly Sun International is a gaming company. So right. wherever they have hotels, they have casinos. Okay, very iconic products. Okay. And at that point, they also had hotels in Botswana, Namibia, um, uh, Zambia. Fabulous property in Zambia, the Royal Livingston and the Zambezi Sun. Mm-hmm. So Sun International actually sold some of these products, and we felt the need to rebrand it in every market. And India was no different. Mm-hmm. So I was in fact. Uh, um, uh, part of that core group uh, from the head office that worked on the rebranding process from oh. sun international to the sun lux collection mm-hmm. um and and no so first it was root of the african sun so where we traced uh, the route right from sun city to cape town to the garden route and, yeah. and and we call that the root of the african sun and then we rebranded it to the sun lux collection um and and which really Uh, gave it a lot of meaning because then we were talking about experiences. Oh, so that's great to hear that you get involved in the entire marketing process. Not that they come to you with a product and you start selling on it. Yes. So how do you think? Uh, I mean, c- considering what has happened in 2020, something which I guess most of us would like to forget, but it's a reality. So how do you think future campaigns will be constructed considering 2020, and how will uh, this affect the way? Uh, you would sell experiences and destination to travelers so you know um, uh, amish i have to say this that and and we had i actually had a call with one of my clients yesterday and he was asking me for a strategy for 2021 and i and i said to him that look what i want because they had made us dormant for a few months and we're just going to start working again for them from october onwards so he said you know i want and they they were always talking about plans and strategy and this so i said look we have to first really get on to the phone and do the job of calling all the agents uh, from the key cities from the key markets that have been delivering to us and really finding out who's there who's not there which of the main people have left and we have to do that data management so he said you know yeah yeah but what after that but i really think that it's important to do the right step every day for us to lead to the right strategy and right now i i could be saying anything 
but that won't really have sense till we really understand whether the skies are opening up is there actually going to be a rapid testing like iata has recommended at the airports are the skies going to open up are the flights going to go then in which case the travelers will go and and then we have then we are in business you know then we can really say okay so this is what we're going to do but we do understand that the market is made up of in india the young people and we know what they're looking at and we know the kind of experiences they are looking at um so so that is the thing of course in indonesia and mauritius we can match that uh, because we are taking because it's a destination you right. understand yeah. in a destination you have experience to experiences to suit every age group and right. we do destinations have experiences that will attract a millennial but when i'm talking about my hotels most of my hotels are resorts or business hotels or they are destination hotels so i have to really be careful as to which hotel i'm pitching to which group so that's yeah. really what my strategy is going to be so i mean and also you know uh, hygiene sanitization and stuff like that is now going to become a very important part of the decision making process for the uh, customer the traveler so do you feel that uh, hotels need to now look at uh, uh, you know working on strategies where they stress on these points and and they deliver accordingly yeah so you see most uh, anyway international hotel chains and chains of a certain level are very very conscious of cleanliness and hygiene and um and and you know there are audits there are asset management companies that actually run safety and hygiene audits mm -hmm. and and they are brutal you know so okay. you really can't take any shots if you're a five star hotel or if you're a, even a four star hotel part of a chain uh, then then you better really do the right thing so that is a given you know when you when actually this whole security drama happened and you started going to airports and hotels and you were yes. frisked and checked this and that this this hygiene protocol is going to be the new way of uh, of how we travel and and uh, how has uh, covid-19 affected uh, your business as such and you did mention that one of your clients was uh, kind of dormant for 6 months but what about the others have they been trying to re-engineer and rescale or something of that kind or have they just said let's wait and watch uh, no so we've had some clients who've been dormant and they and they most of them are coming back in october and some clients we've been working for we've been engaging in the market and the best we could really do is to keep ourselves visible and alive mm -hmm. and i think that is really important because yes. once and the business is going to come back you know there is no question of the business not coming back so so therefore we still need to be relevant we still need to be marketing but do we want to be as a brand one among thousands who are going to be there when the business comes or do we already want to do smart things uh, leading up to the time when it opens right so i think uh, definitely we are part of that brigade where we were doing smart things before the business opens and and therefore uh, visible so now uh, what do you see as the changes we will see in the way people travel as individuals post covid if there is no covid um uh, yes a lot of travel will come back uh, to the levels to possibly the levels it was uh, or maybe not um, and i'll tell you why okay so so there are uh, there, there are two segments at the moment clearly that i can see there is a a segment which has some money mm -hmm. and and they're traveling in india at the moment right. and they and they're not really batting an eyelid on spending the kind of money they're spending on domestic travel yes and there is you know the big growing business for us was mice mice was at a scorching pace you know we just couldn't get enough of it it was like yes. that Okay, so, but then I'm asking myself the question: Do companies really have that kind of money now to put out for mice travel? Are they going to be looking at mice the same way they were doing before 2020? I think those levels will still take a couple of years to come. Yes, I reckon maybe 2023 is when we will start seeing that kind of a pickup. Mm -hmm. Mice is going to be back. 
but mice is going to be back at like a later stage at, at a mid level yeah at, and yeah, no, I guess- not at it is coming back in 2021 we've had companies that that were booked with us for 2020 and that they're putting themselves back for 2021 but not at that level not the same level yes because basically mice involves a lot of people being at the same place at the same time and i think it's going to take time for people to get used to that to have large gatherings and large events but eventually i I mean uh, incentive is something which works for any company so it would come back but probably take some time yeah, and both, I, both your destinations are very good for mice so that that's a good thing i guess they're absolutely fabulous for mice but you know if you really look at the grassroots level you look at for instance uh, yamaha dealer is anybody even buying motorbikes now where is that industry even going so True. if you really dissect and go into every industry yes pharma will be there yes. they will have the money to buy and they'll True. probably True. my business so that's how it's really going to be so now coming to a, a buzzword in uh, tourism right now which is sustainability uh, do you think uh, encouraging sustainable practices in the tourism industry is very important and uh, what are the actions which you as a company are taking in terms of advising your clients on sustainable uh, practices so connect worldwide actually works with a uh, um, with a sustainable tourism company and the company is headed by one of our ex-connect worldwide colleagues out of spain um, and um, and so we try whenever we are we are pitching for business we always try to put the sustainable marketing angle in it because we passionately believe that it's very important, it's important yes. um, and and very early on in our uh, business we worked with companies such as six senses which sensitized us as individuals and professionals right. into sustainable ways of working and and i think that was fabulous and at that point indians really didn't understand what responsible or sustainable tourism was all about right. but that changed us forever we were changed okay. um so uh, you know right now i also have uh, sanjay and i so actually Sanjay, my husband, he's the one who set up Outbound Marketing and I at that point used to be working for Meridian Hotels and I joined him a year later. Okay. Uh, so he and I uh, have grown this business together mm-hmm. and he and I have now set up um, a, a homestay, like a retreat. Mm-hmm. Uh, people have told me not to call it a homestay because he said, you know, you can qualify to be a resort, mm-hmm. but, but we are still small enough and we call ourselves a retreat. A retreat. And, and where we follow completely sustainable practices, uh, whether it is with solar energy, whether it, it is with uh, harvesting rainwater, whether it is with training locals and employing them rather than importing talent from any of the cities. Um, and uh, on top of that, trying to set up a waste management system, which will not only help us, but uh, help a couple of villages around us. Uh, those are the sort of things we've done. We've also worked through Annapurna Charitable Foundation on a project in Uttarakhand in village Pyoda, where we've set up homestays in th- in villagers' homes. Um, and we nice. partnered uh, with uh, Meridian New Delhi, uh, and they helped us in the audits and the training. So it was a year and a half long project, and uh, and finally at the end of the project, we also got Uttarakhand Tourism involved and then they helped set up a cooperative because now the homestays were set the training was done the standards were set but then what after that so the cooperative was formed and now they're kind of running their business themselves so yes we 100 percent believe in sustainability do you think sustainability would take a little bit of a hit uh, because of these uh, you know the way we are having to use uh, sanitizers and chemicals to clean up places and things like that given covid yeah, it's uh, it's heartbreaking actually, yeah. because you know you actually had hotels before 2020 who who were trying to declare themselves uh, single-use plastic free, yes. and you know literally what we are doing now, our gloves are coming off, our masks are coming off, and, you know, we have the PPE kits, and how they're getting disposed of, God only knows. Nobody knows. Yeah, so so it's taken us back definitely many many years. Many years. 
Yeah. But uh, do you see uh, in in terms of the tourist who's traveling a certain sense of responsibility? I mean, sustainability eventually is a goal, but the way to reach sustainability is responsibility. One needs to travel responsibly. Do you see even the uh, traveler, the customer, understanding this and going the responsible way? Yeah, very little. You know, I I literally have to in my uh, retreat. I have to put up a sign in the toilet saying, "Please minimize the use of tissue paper, and do not flush it down WCs." And you know, these are the sort of really basic things you need to tell them, uh, which they don't understand. So I think you, you're very. That question is so valid. You really need to sensitize the traveling people yes. on what responsible tourism really means. Right. And that's going to take a little bit of time and. but i think sustainability by itself is a very very strong ideal and uh, at least i think the young crowd seems to be understanding the whole thing do you see a lot of youngsters uh, willing to work towards that i'm uh, not really very few i i would really say very very few people a few people i think there's got to be a whole media campaign on uh, how to travel sustainably how to live sustainably how to live sustainably Okay, uh, uh, Vasudha. Before we end off, any parting thoughts for our viewers, considering your rich experience in the trade and what is going to happen ahead in the next, say, four to five years? Well, what I would really say is, you know, these are tough times, and uh, tough times don't last. Sound sound really cliched. <laughs> tough people do, and um, and just to hang in there. uh don't give up on the travel and hospitality industry it's a great great place to be in a great educator um you know and if you love this business then don't leave it just sustain yourself for the next couple of months and you will see that things will be all right great thank you so much vasudha that's really a good optimistic note to end on and uh, i'm sure our viewers uh, especially those from the travel industry would be really happy to hear this So thank you so much Vasudha for spending your time. It's been a pleasure speaking with you and uh, we hope to catch up with you soon enough once things are I, a little better. And for our so no no thank you. And for our viewers uh, we hope you enjoyed the show today and if you did please do not forget to click on like, subscribe and share and of course leave your comments in the comment section. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Until next time stay safe.